In this video, we will be learning how to solve a minimization linear programming problem using simplex method. Now, let us solve this minimization problem using the simplex method. So, before I solve this minimization problem, there are two ways by which we can handle this minimization problem. The first one is that let us recall our previous video expression where we have done that z hat is the improved value. And this improved value can have a relation with the previous value. So this is the previous value that I'm noting by Z0 minus theta j into Zj minus Cj. In my last video, we have done this expression. And from there, we have seen that theta j is the minimum ratio and which is always non-negative. And so that means Z hat depends upon only Zj minus Cj. For the maximization problem, we said enter Zj minus Cj with the most negative value. So this most negative value will add into this negative value and z hat will improve so in this case z hat will be greater than or equal to z naught so that address to maximization problem similarly now for minimization problem i need to now enter zj minus cj with most positive if we enter most positive in that case z improved value will be less than or equal to the previous value and hence it address to minimization problem so this is the method one by which we can solve our minimization problem where we change our entering rule so we follow this entering rule since our problem is minimization or in this second method if we always want to remember the one rule that always entering variable should be most negative in that case we can convert our minimization problem into maximization so we say convert minimization problem to maximization problem and while doing this conversion what we need to do is we only need to rewrite our objective function as minimization of z is same as minus of maximization of minus z so we take two times the negative negative of this subjective function will definitely give us the minimum of z or similarly if i wanted to convert my maximization problem then the same expression can also be written now i'll solve the problem with the two methods in the first method i will enter with the minimization rule and in the second method when i will solve this problem i will convert the minimization function into maximization and then you can see that there is no change in the calculation or the data available in the simplex table except then there is a change in the zj minus cj row but this does not change the optimal value so now we solve the problem with method one and we write the lpp into standard form so when we write lpp into standard form we must need to add the slack variable wherever they are necessary so we can see that our lpp becomes this as minimization of z this is equal to x1 minus 3 x2 plus 2 times x3 and then in the first, second and third constraint, we will be involving the slack variable. So this is 0 times S1 plus 0 times S2 plus 0 times S3. So these are the cost of the slack variable subject to 3x1 minus x2 plus 2x3 plus S1 equal to 7. So that is the first constraint. And similarly, I'm going to write now the second constraint 4x2 plus S2 equal to 12 and minus 4x1 plus 3x2 plus 8x3 and the third slack variable s3 equal to 10 and now all the decision variable x1 x2 x3 and s1 s2 s3 all are greater than or equal to 0 now let's just write the coefficient matrix so the coefficient matrix consists of the columns 3 minus 2 minus 4 this is corresponding to x1 then corresponding to x2 you can read from the constraint minus 1 4 3 x3 2 x3 is not appearing in the second constraint then we write s1 s1 is in the first constraint s2 is in the second constraint and s3 is in the third constraint so this is a matrix of order 3 cross 6 and to select b we need to select an identity matrix a sub cro 3 cross 3 identity matrix which is a sub matrix from the matrix a so this is the identity matrix which is available once the identity matrix is av available then we know xb is directly the right hand side b because xb is b inverse multiplied by right hand side so this is this is currently identity so that is right hand side so the solution b is 7 12 10 xb is 7 12 and 10 and so i can make my first simplex table so this is basic variable and then we can have this solution and then we need to write the zj minus c row let us write all decision variable x1 x2 x3 s1 s2 and s3 so once i write all the decision variable so now i need to fill out the scalar and here i also write this basic variable so these are the solution of the basic variable 7 12 10 and i directly write now from the coefficient matrix i've explained this point in my last video how do we write the scalars directly because currently they are corresponding to the identity matrix 
and then we write zj minus c0 so here we write z and this current value is 0 because the cb vector is 0 so cb into this xb they are 0 7 into 0 this is 0 and the z row is also simply negative of the cost of the x1 x2 so in the objective function we can see the cost of x1 is 1 so here this value is minus 1 this is 3 this would be minus 2 0 0 0 in my last video i have also explained why the zj minus cj is simply negative of the objective function because zj minus cj is calculated as cb into the scalars so the formula for scalars is b inverse into aj minus cj now because cb vector is zero so this into the scalars are already zero so this is simply negative of cj so these are the values for zj minus cj that i have written here now as we are following the method one and the current problem is minimization so we need to enter the variable with most positive zj minus cj and here most positive zj minus cj is this one so i'll write here enter most positive zj minus cj so this is what is our entering variable and because the problem is minimization so we are using the direct formulas we have not converted our problem minimization into maximization now in that entering variable we need to find the leaving variable as you can see that there are scalars which are strictly positive 4 and 3 this scalar will not be allowed in the calculation because it is negative so we will only take the ratio so upon so we will only take the ratio of 12 by 4 and 10 by 3 so this ratio is 3 and this is 3.3 something so that means the minimum ratio is corresponding to s2 so once we have identified the leaving variable and the entering variable the common element at the intersection of these two is 4 so this 4 is what we have called it as a pivot element so in the next table in place of x2 we want a 1 here and everywhere else we want a 0 so with the help of this i now need to fill the row operation so let us consider that there are four rows r1 r2 r3 r4 so using the previous entries i am going to now fill out this table pivot element is in the third row including the z row so let's consider this as first second third and fourth row so r3 by 4 so that is the pivot row so this will become minus 1 by 2 1 0 0 1 by 4 0 3 and let us see the operation for r1 in the r1 row we have here the value as 3 so i want a 0 here this means the r1 operation is r1 minus 3 with the help of the pivot that is r3 by 4 and similarly for the r2 we can see that here we got minus 1 and i need to make it as a 0 so r2 is minus 1 plus 1 with the help of the pivot and similarly for the fourth row we got a we got a 3 here so that means i need to subtract it from the 3 so this is minus 3 r3 by 4 now using these row operation i am filling out the table as and we can verify some of the entries that i've written here say for example i want to verify this how i got this minus 9 and this is corresponding to the first row so in the first row let us use the previous row so let us see here r1 is a 0 and corresponding to this operation r3 is 12 so if i want to verify how did i got this minus 9 the new r1 goes to the previous r1 is 0 minus 3 times r3 that is 12 by 4 so this value is 0 minus 3 into 3 so that is how we got minus 9 so i've applied the row operation let us also verify some of the other entries as minus 3 by 4 so minus 3 by 4 is corresponding to r4 and in that r4 i need to use the previous value so for this r4 the new r4 the previous r4 is a 0 the corresponding that is 0 minus 3 times r3 by 4 r3 position is 1 so this is 1 and 0 that i'm using 1 by 4 so this value is minus 3 by 4 so hence i got minus 3 by 4 so now again i see this current zj minus cj is negative or not you can see still see that this 1 by 2 is still positive so i'm going to enter now this variable enter most positive till the time there is a positive value i'm still going to enter and see that this is negative and this is negative both these scalars are negative so the only option is that s1 will leave the variable so remove this from the basis by the minimum ratio rule so the minimum ratio rule is now applicable to only this case and from here we can see that this becomes the pivot element so if this becomes the pivot element now instead of s1 i have in the basis the variable x1 because x1 is entering x2 and s3 keep them in the same order in which the replacement is going on 
x1 is now in the basis so pivot element has to be 1 and the remaining r to be 0 so i am using again the row operation so r1 r2 r3 and r4 now you see r2 is the pivot row so you just simply multiply 2 by 5 to make this element as 1 and in the first position we got a half here so to make this half as 0 in the next row what i am going to do is r1 minus half with the help of pivot that is 2 by 5 r2 so you can further reduce this so basically it is r1 minus 1 by 5 r2 r3 so r3 position we have minus half so this means r3 plus half with the help of pivot so pivot row first i fix the pivot row and according to this i will change so basically this pivot row is a changed row and then in the r4 also r4 we need minus 5 by 2 so you just simply add 5 by 2 with the help of the pivot and now with these row operation i can fill the next table and also noting that we can although we can calculate all the entries from these row operation but there are some of the entries that are very evident say for example x2 is in the basis so we know definitely it is going to give you one here and the other element as zero so you can fit then directly s3 is in the basis so here it is one corresponding to s3 row and s3 column and all the other entries are zero so basically we want to find the entries which are corresponding to non-basic variable so now we find the entries corresponding to non-basic variable and these are and in this we can also see the value of z you can see that z initially we have started z at zero and in the next table we got z equal to minus 9 and the next table we got z equal to minus 11 so the value of z is improving here the improvement means because we objective function is minimization so we want a minimum to minimum value and we can see again at z j minus c j current z j minus c j is less than or equal to 0 so all z j minus c j is less than or equal to 0 and the problem is minimization so the current table is optimal and if this is optimal the optimal solution is z minimum value is equal to minus 11 z can be negative and but the solution has not to be negative as we remember that all the decision variable are to be non-negative so x1 is 4 we see that x1 is 4 x2 is 5 and x3 is not appearing in the basis so that means it is acting as a non-basic variable and the non-basic variable takes the value 0 so this is the optimal solution and to get the optimal value z equal to 11 we could have also used z is cb into x 4 into minus 1 plus 5 into 3 so that is 5 into 3 15 minus 4 11 minus 11 so we got this minus 11 so either we can calculate z row by the formula z j minus c j for example minus 1 into 1 plus 3 into 0 plus 0 into 0 minus the cost of the x1 will give me the 0 so z row can be calculated using the formula or using the row operation this gives the same result and now if i want to solve this minimization problem by converting this into maximization then let us see how do we solve this problem and we should get the same optimal solution as we have got from the method one so in method two we convert minimization problem into maximization and here for the conversion i will convert minimization z is same as minus of maximization of minus z so this should give me the same solution as i have obtained in the earlier case now this is the uh, linear programming problem that i have written in the uh, standard form the same question but here i want to write now the objective function with this conversion so this minimization z will become minus of maximum of minus z so the left hand side i have replaced this left hand side i have replaced as minus of maximum of minus z and on the right hand side we have x1 minus 3 x2 plus 2 times x3 plus 0 into s1 plus 0 into s2 plus 0 into s3 so that is the objective function now bring this negative sign on the right hand side so this will become maximum of minus z is equal to minus x1 plus 3 x2 minus 2 x3 and because it is 0 times s1 so it and minus 0 times s3 now i will use this objective function with the given constraint so in that given constraint there is no change in the a matrix and hence there is no change in the b matrix this is the selection of the b matrix we want to start from a basic feasible solution and xb is same as b inverse multiply by right hand side so xb starting initial bfs is same 7 12 and 10 and they satisfy the non-negative restriction so hence it is an initial basic feasible solution now since this is the objective function so i will make now the simplex table considering this objective function into mind 
Now I've written first simplex table considering this subjective function into mind and also notice that here we got it as a minus z. This is not z. So in the objective function, the variable is minus z. So here instead of z, I'm going to write it as minus z. So this value that I'm going to write here, this is the value for minus z, not for z. And in the object z minus c0, which is here, this is simply negative of this value. So if it is minus 1 here, this will become 1. If it is plus 3 here, I'm going to write minus 3. This is minus 2. So here I'm write plus 2. And for the slack variable, because they're in the basis, so their z minus cj is 0 also. And we can see by the calculation also, this is 0. So obviously these are here 0. Now, since the objective function is maximization, so I'm going to apply the rule for the maximization problem. And in the maximization problem, we enter most negative. So if this is the maximization, enter most negative. And from here onwards, you can see there is no change in the calculation. The entering variable is same as we have selected in the minimization problem. The only difference is that there is a difference in the negative sign of this. And this is because we have multiplied by a minus sign. So now we operate in the similar manner as we have done in the earlier case. This is the entering variable and by minimum ratio rule, I will find out this is the pivot element. So this corresponds to the least ratio 12 by 4 and 10 by 3. And now from this pivot element, I'm going to construct the next simplex table. In the basis, we have S1, X2 and S3. And we follow the same procedure corresponding to x2 we have 1 here and the 0. So we'll apply the similar row operation as we have done in the earlier case to fill out this table as this. And then again we enter this variable because this is the one with the most negative. And here again s1 becomes the leaving variable. So we identify 5 by 2 as the pivot row. And these from here you can see that these are calculations are going exactly aligned with what we have already done. You also notice that initially z is 0 then we got 9 this is also so this com this row is completely negative of what we have obtained. And now in the similar procedure we got this table and we notice that minus z is equal to 11 and the current zj minus cj are all greater than or equal to 0. And we have considered the objective function in this problem as maximization because we have already converted. And we notice that the value for minus z is equal to 11. So we can say minus z is equal to 11. That means the value for original z is minus 11. So this last step again needs to be converted. That means the original z minimum value is equal to minus 11. At x1 is equal to 4, x2 is equal to 5 and x3 which is a non-basic variable at this moment. So this value is 0. So this this is the optimal solution for the minimization problem and to find this optimal solution for the minimization what we have done is we have only converted the objective function into maximization problem and then we can only remember one rule for the entering variable as a maximization this does not change anything about the feasibility criteria because we have not changed the constraint we have only changed the objective function so in that objective function, in, if you want to compare now the previous table and the new table, the only difference that there is a difference in the negative of this row. So the negative of these rows are same as the previous table obtained. And hence we can solve the minimization problem by either directly solving or by converting into maximization problem.